everybody. How y'all doing tonight? It is December the 11th. 2020 it's another day that the lord has made we shall rejoice and be glad in it for some of you it's december 12th already 2020 so god bless you and welcome to the live those of you who will be live and those of you who will be catch the replay and one reason why this should be a perfect example to us hey bro you don't answer my calls and i don't like that but anyway, that's my real brother, like my real oldest brother. So this is a perfect opportunity to let us know that we don't control time. You know, people try to cancel something. How you doing? Um, uh, I haven't been known like maybe uh, you sick, but we're going to pray you heal. Uh, I haven't been on this week, I don't think, maybe once. But you know how people are saying, like, cancel 2020 and all these things. But this shows you the perfect time. Well, right now where I am, Eastern Standard Time, is December the 11th. But somebody's already crossed over into December 12th. We can't control time. Like, we have daylight savings time. Well, Hawaii doesn't do that, right? Because you really can't push time up and you can't push time back. But I just thought about that when I came on. So God bless you all. My name is Seminator Student Teacher. I help leaders and educators tell their story through written and verbal communication. According to Jeremiah 29, if I say I'll never mention the Lord or speak in his name, his word truly really do burn in my heart. It's like a fire. I be trying to hold it in. I just can't do it. So welcome tonight. Welcome tonight. I'm glad you all, your guys are on. Like, you just never know who pop on. So I'm happy my brother's here. Um, Steve-O, God bless you. Um, <laughs> God bless you. So thank you to all y'all who, who are here. So if you see the title of this, let me go back over to this Facebook and see what it say. What energizes you and what's important to you? Miss LJ, hey, Miss LJ, I'm so glad you got that note. I'm so glad you got that note. Like, I'm so glad you got that note. And you know what? I was thinking about doing something for like all of the people who have um, supported the student teacher this year and just, you know, people, customers of, I want to take time to write a note to them. Like, <laughs> It's powerful. I didn't realize it until I read mine at night. Like, wow, it speaks right to me. So I'm excited. So guys, as much as y'all can love on the people that you love, as much as you can reach out to the people that you love and care about as many times, as often as you can tell people that you care about them, tell them that you care about them. Because sometimes people need to hear that. People need to know that somebody cares, especially in this social distance, isolated, wear a mask, cover up, stay home, don't go out environment that we are currently in. People need to know that. I mean, imagine people felt like that prior to all of this. Now in the midst of this, where people really can't gather and hang out and do all kinds of things, as much as you can, reach out to the people that you love as often as you can. And now that I'm a little older, <laughs> certain things that happen to me, sometimes it bothers me, but then I look back and say, but I do that too, or I did that too. And so you have to be very patient and understanding with people. And so tonight we're going to talk about what's important to you, what energizes you. I'm going to share a couple of things that I um, heard today um, in the midst of working and and relaxing and all of that and i want to share with you guys so in the comments or you can this could be a rhetorical question for you what energizes you what's important to you and you know i don't take it for granted i don't assume but let's say that god is number one god is ultimately number one supreme in our lives and i can say that's for me after God, what really energizes you? What really motivates you? What's really important to you? And I'm going to get into all of this that I heard today because what I found out is whatever we are, whatever that we find is meaningful, 
whatever people find as inspiration or whatever people find that's a benefit to them, that's what they invest in. Anything that we find meaningful or that's going to add value to us or that's something we're trying to um, accomplish at the time or something that's piquing our interest or something we're looking for right then, <laughs> that's where we will put our energy. That's where we will spend our time. That's when we are investing. And so instead of getting upset with people, you just realize that that's not important to them at the moment. Right. It's just not important to them at the moment. And it could very well be important, but it may not be as important as the other things that they got going on in their lives. And I think when we look at that, we won't feel so rejected. We won't feel this abandonment. We won't feel like old people don't love us. It just means that they got some other priorities right now. And sometimes we think that we are a priority. We're really an option to people. Sometimes we think that we should be a little higher on their concern board than we really are. And when we realize that we all go through whatever we go through, family is important to you. Yeah. I know you do love family. Um, so, uh, when we think, when we take all of that in, into account, we realize that our lives measure up to what we find, what we believe is important. That our life will measure up based on what we believe is important. Now, I shared something before, and I wasn't going to share this, but I'll share this now. Pictures are good for the ego. Relationships are beneficial for the soul. And I've shared this before. And my brother, well, he's on my suit teacher page, but um, just like my real brother, <laughs> my real live brother. Um, but I share my own personal preference. I don't share my friends. I don't share my family on my Facebook page or on my social media page by choice. That's a choice that I have made. Sometimes people don't like it because they feel like, why are you posting this? And why are you posting that? And why are y'all talking about that? That's a choice that I made. Doesn't mean that they're not important to me. Doesn't mean that I don't love them. Doesn't mean that I don't go see them. Doesn't mean I don't have pictures. But sometimes, especially in a whole social media, pop it up here, show where you've been, who you're with, all of this stuff that we can have pictures with people. But it's the relationship that's beneficial, right? The picture is only going to last but so long. But the relationship you build with people, that's what's going to stay. That's what's going to encourage. That's what's going to motivate, right? So this other thing, and I'm going to go back to where I need to go. Your flaws look flawless to other people. Some of the things that we get caught up on, some of the things that, you know, bother us, some of the things that we're wishing we could change about ourselves. You know, somebody's looking at your flaw right now saying that's flawless. <laughs> so I took my braids out, right? I cut my hair. So y'all see like right here, it's just cut, right? It's all short because I cut my hair out, right? So some people are like, oh my God, I like your hair, whatever, whatever. Well, I see that as like, O-M-G, but I'm not going to let that stop me. And so a lot of times what happens is people allow their flaws to stop them. Don't allow your flaw flaws to stop you. You focus on the good, you work on the bad, and you keep pushing. You focus on the good, you work on the bad, but you keep pushing. If I allow how I felt, what I looked like, all of that stuff, what I was going through, all of that stuff, I would never come out on Facebook Live. like ever. <laughs> I would never be here, but I realize that it's greater than just my own wants and my own desires and what I want and all of this stuff. It's to really be a benefit to other people. Remember, what's important to you is what you prioritize. Um, so your purpose, your purpose is what you do every day. Your purpose, hey, Miss Linda, your purpose is what you do every day. Now, I may not be on Facebook Live, but I am talking and sharing something. If it ain't to my friend on FaceTime, right? Your purpose is what you do every day. For some people, it may not be on a social media platform because you may like, I just like to be a watcher. I like to be a consumer, right? I don't want to get on, you know, whatever. You, It could be family, like my brother said. It could be family. It could be marriage. It could be, you know, whatever it is that you want to do. Look at what you're doing every day. See what it is that you're doing every day. What's important to you that you continue to seek after? I believe that's when you'll find your purpose. And what I what I really, really realize is that we can never project our values on others that don't live our lives. 
that we can never project our values, what we value, what we deem to be important, what we think is good, what we think is is right. We can never project that on other people who do not live our lives, who do not have the same values as us, because we'll be disappointed, we'll be upset, we'll be hurt. Come on, okay. Um, we'll be upset, we'll be you know mad and angry and offended, right? Because we're trying to project our values. We're trying to project what we think is important. We're trying to project how how we were raised or what we have been taught onto other people. And what we can do is educate people, but you can't force anything upon a person. And Seminate had to learn this the hard way. And Seminate would think, wow, this person should know that. Or they should know how I feel, especially like with, with people and feelings. And if they offend you or hurt you and you'll never have a conversation about them, they not mind readers, right? Um, and, and and what our values, what, what we believe is important, what's important to us, and what may be important to you right now in D December the 11th, 2020, which now is December 12th, 2020, what you believe to be important right now may not have been what you thought was important or what you deem to be important January 2020 or April 2020 or July 2020, or October 2020, or even November 2020, those things may not have been important to you then, right? So when we talk about values and our systems, and you know the new year's about to come, and I see a lot of people doing vision boards and um, vision casting parties. I don't know, I might attend one, I don't know. But this is what I know about vision and our values. We will never accomplish a vision that does not align with our values. That's why you see people can only go so long pretending and trying to be people that they're not. For one thing, the grace of God is not on your life. I've heard many, many people say, and I'm still trying to process all what that really means. I know they wasn't saying it in a bad way, but I'm really looking to process. OK, what does that mean? But a lot of my friends says, you do so much, I can't keep up. You do so much, I can't keep up. And I know in business, a confused mind would never buy. So I was like, okay, I'm going to streamline 2021 and beyond to make sure I'm focused on these three things. There's a lot of things I could talk about. Now, I always say, you guys, the ABCs of the student teacher. And I haven't said this in a very long time, but the ABCs of the student teacher. And this keeps everything I do within these parameters. A is for academics, right? Most of you know I'm a public school teacher, <laughs> right? Um, but that's not the reason why God said I was a student teacher. A lot of people believe that, but that's not why. Get my first book. I shared it one night, but get my first book. Stand those where I tell you about the day that he called me the student teacher. This one right here. And the reason why I had this out, because I was sharing something with my, <laughs> my, my pastor, who's not my active pastor right anymore. Um, but it was... And I love to write stuff down because I like to keep dates and times and, you know, I, I always like that. But it was, I wrote it down, June 7, 2016, when the Lord said to me, you're the student teacher. I remember I was getting out of the shower, right? June 6, 2017 says, you are the student teacher. Not because I was a teacher, but academics, I'm a teacher, Right. Um, and then I just love, like, I'm a teacher, teacher, through and through. I like to teach, right? I like to teach. I like to talk. I like to speak. Uh, I like to, I like all that, right? Um, B, books that include the Bible. Books that include the Bible. So I may come in here and we may chop it up just about the Bible itself. Or we may come and I may talk about other projects and other books that I'm doing, or I may post about books. I may post about book anthology or book projects or opportunities for you to collabor collaborate with a student teacher, right? Books that include the Bible. So everything I do falls up on the academics, books that include the Bible and see crucial conversations. C is crucial conversations. And so we, we have that. Most of the crucial conversations I have is always offline. Cause again, I would say you guys, 
everybody's testimony is not going to be on social media. Everybody's testimony is not going to be live. Everybody don't plan on putting a camera in their face to tell their story or clicking on the computer to share something that's on their heart. So C is for crucial conversations. And the greatest crucial conversation that we will ever have is between us and God. The things that we hope people will never find out about us, the things that we wish no, that we could change and erase it all away. But guess what? This is in one of my other books. And I don't even know why I keep talking about my books tonight, but I'm going to show what you guys on my website. You can go there and get the books. You can go there and get all the pretty heel merchandise. I'm going to show you some new colors we got just for 10 days. We're going to see what sells the most, and then we're going to bring it back in 2021. You can edit a picture, but you can't edit your past. That's why I don't get caught up in pictures because, again, pictures are good for our egos. Relationships are beneficial for your soul. Some pictures, you can go and crop a person out. Have you ever seen people when they're in a relationship? <laughs> they're in a relationship or, you know, friendship or co whatever. And then they get, uh, no, it's not free, bro. It's not free. Um, and then when the relationship is over or you're mad at them or whatever, you crop people out, right? A relationship, I just can't crop you out. I got to deal with your imperfection and your flaw and all your things because you got to deal with me and my flaws and all my things. So we learn to get along in, in, in the midst of all of our things. So when people say that to me, I know they're not saying it in a bad way. But I was looking like, okay, how can I streamline everything? But everything really falls upon the ABCs of the student teacher. I'm going to reshare that flyer one day so people can know like, oh, yeah, she does go with academics, B, books that include the Bible, and C, crucial conversation. That's the real premise behind everything that the student teacher does. But in my first book, I have declarations, right? Um, declaration, affirmation. When I started saying these back in 2015, my life didn't look anything like it looks right now, right? This is really <laughs> a miracle of God. But one of the first declarations I got, I would just go through the word. I would go through the Bible. And really, I, that's all I had. And I always share this. I never want to get back to that place when all I had is God. Now, all I have now is God is my ultimate source, but that's not all I have. He's allowed me to send people and family and friends and, you know, tangible things, tangible uh, uh, things I've been able to accomplish because I was speaking this word and I was believing this word. In the very first scripture here, and my pastor, she said something to me that was so sweet the other night. I was like, oh, my God. It was yesterday. She's not my current pastor anymore, but she's still my pastor. And I said, do you know that was my prayer? I said, I used to do a lot of bad things, and it was true. <laughs> people used to say a lot of bad stuff about me, and it was all true. So I don't be trying to get all mad when people say, you know, she used to be whatever, whatever, whatever. I know. Isn't that terrible? But thank God I have changed. So this is the scripture. And I pray that some of you can start praying that and speaking that and believing that over your life. Get to the point. What? Bro, you just stick with me. So like, and like when men, they want you just get to the point. They like just facts only, right? Why she keep talking? Why she keep talking? Bro, you don't even come up here a lot, right? You don't even be up here a lot. So Philippians one and three, it says, every time someone thinks of me, they will speak well of me and give thanks to God for knowing me. Every time someone thinks of me, they will speak well of me and give thanks to God for knowing me. Honey, <laughs> when people say nice things to me and about me and they're thankful and all this stuff, I always go back to God made this happen. Because there was some stuff people really could say that they weren't giving thanks, thanks for me. They, they, weren't, they, they was hoping they could forget me and I could forget them, but he will do that for you. And that's why it goes back to What's important to you? What aligns with your values? What are you doing right now that's helping you walk into the things that you believe that you're called to do? Teams, when you talk about even teams and working with people, teams of people work together for their values. When people can't get together, when you see a whole bunch of disunity, that's because values are not aligned. Teams work for their values, right? So it could be in ministry, 
It could definitely be in family. It could be in friendship. It could be if you working together, teams work for their values. If I don't value what you're doing, if I don't value the event you're trying to put together, if I don't even value the people that you want to include in this, they're not going to work towards it. If you ever seen you ask somebody to do something or, or get together or, or collaborate on something and they, they say no or they have do it or they just ignore you, period. But then you see them doing the same thing that you asked them or something similar to that or maybe different. Doing it for somebody else is because they value that. Whether it's the person that they ask, they value that more than they value you. If whatever they're doing, they value that more. Teams work for what they value. Teams work for what they value. What's your problem, bro? bro? What's your problem? Teams work for their values. Just think about the things you've seen people gather for and collaborate on. They value that. They value that. <laughs> they value that. So think about even the things that may go on in our natural bodies, within our natural environments, the symptoms that we may have. It could be good, bad, or indifferent. Symptoms in your business, symptoms in your body is feedback. What is it telling you? What symptoms do you have right now? <laughs> what is that trying to tell you? And then what you going to do about that? If we get bothered and upset, oh, feel what you're saying. Okay. If someone gets upset or somebody's offended, right? That's, that's feedback for them. What are you going to do with that? You're going to just go off and cuss people out and cut people off or what? What you going to do about that? Or maybe you feel attracted to somebody. You just like, oh, I got to have what you going to do. You just going to go be with them like symptoms in our body, symptoms in our business, symptoms in our homes, symptoms in our family is feedback. What are you doing with the feedback? And again, we'll go back to teams work for their values. People, humanity, all of us. We find time what's important to us. If you really want to know what's important to a person, look at what they find time to do. If you really want to know what's important to a person, see what they spend their time doing. It's important to me that I use my voice, that I use the gift that God has given me, that I share and encourage other people. That's important to me. So you guys see me more and more and more coming out online. If that's not important, you people will be like, why? Why she keep going online, having all these excuses? And I'm thinking, why does that bother you? <laughs> why does that bother you? What's being what's important to me is being transparent about my walk and what I've been through and the things that I've done so I can help somebody else. Why does that bother other people when they like, oh, my God, why is she saying that? Why is she doing that? Right. People find time for what's important to them. Whether it's spending time with a person, talking to a person, meeting up with a person, you know, however you operate with the five love languages, we talked about that. It's acts of service, quality time, physical touch, words of affirmation, or gifts, right? Yo, I don't know what your primary love language is, right? But we will make time for the things that's important to us. We'll make time for those things that are dominant a primary dominant love language for us in our life. And then we run out of time and make excuses for the things that are not. Oh, you know, you can spend 16 hours on the phone with somebody you really like, you really want to talk to, but then you can't even find five minutes or two minutes to talk to somebody that maybe it's not really important to you, or maybe they're not important to you at the moment, right? We always find time for what's important to us. And we run out of time we make excuses for things that are not important to us. Yeah. <laughs> and so when, when it goes back to, and I talked about not projecting our values on other people because they don't live our same lives. We, we are all different people. We also can't compare ourselves to others who have different values than us. We can't compare ourselves to other people who have different values than us because it'll leave people real distraught feeling like they're not measuring up they'll feel like you know they're you know they're not good enough 
I was sharing this with one of my cousins the other day. And I was saying, you know, people can give us all kinds of advice. They really can. They can give us the Bible, which is the best advice, I believe. Um, and I stand, I stand on that, right? I mean, my call an election, sure. Um, but it's not a but. That's a period. That's a complete sentence. <laughs> um, but even people can give you the best advice. But we have to take what works, what's going to work for us, or what has worked for us, or what we believe is going to work for us. And it could come through people. But if it's not working the same way it worked for them, the same exact way it worked for them, then we can't get all mad and be like, oh, well, I'm a failure or I must be a bad person. No, especially when it comes to even like with relationships. Right. If two friends have a falling out. Right. Other friends can say, hey, I think this is what y'all should do. Y'all should get back together. Y'all should talk, whatever, whatever. Yeah, I think we should always talk and confront when people do issues. But the way we go about and do it, you know, it may take somebody a longer time to come back for whatever reason. Right. But just because you was able to reconcile in in five minutes or two minutes or 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 or, or a day or two, it doesn't mean you bash and make other people feel bad because they still working through some stuff. Right. Um. A lot of times we talk about forgiveness. A lot of times we talk about um, reconciliation with people. But sometimes people get upset <laughs> when people reconcile and forgive somebody that we deem they shouldn't talk to again, that we get upset. You know, the person done told us whatever, whatever, whatever. And what we keep talking about, forgive people, forgive people and love people. Now, I'm not saying say an abusive situation or nothing like that, but I believe all people could change. Right. Regardless of whatever the situation is. But when we talk about forgiveness and talk about loving people, when people reconcile, sometimes people be looking like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe they did this. It's like, well, that ain't your life. That ain't your life. And we can't put our values on somebody else. Maybe they value whatever, whatever they got going on. So what we do is we just love people. Yeah. So that's what I wanted to share with you guys initially. So you see the pretty heel um, shirts. I got some new colors. Boom, boom, boom. First, we started out with the white pretty heel. Uh, now we had the black hoodies and white hoodies. Um, and these these are the colors that's coming out between the 15th and the 25th. So you have 10 days to decide you're going to get one or not because then they're going to be gone. And they're not on, they're on my site, but you can't order them just yet. We got the red pretty heel. We got the yellow pretty heel. So all you fellas, my brother, other young men, you can buy this for your sweet lady. Is we got the blue. We have the light green. We have the khaki. We have the dark brown, which I really like that. We got the blue, and then you can find all this on SeminaryWallen.com. It's a forty-eight hour sale. Um, on everything is cheaper than the original price. Um, so you can go to simnawalton.com and do that. Now, I also want to encourage you guys that to a um, client, <laughs> they released their books today and I'm really excited for them. Um, so if you, if you're looking for a book, um, her book is called my journey of healing. It talks about emotional eating, feeling the, it really talks about the voids. How do we cope with the voids we have in our life? That's pretty much what it is. And she just used uh, um, food. Some people use sex. Some people use drugs. Some people use alcohol. Some people use avoidance. Some people use work. You ever met people who just work, work? Oh, God, they just work, right? Because they trying to fill the void. Some people use ministry and church to fill the void. They just keep going and doing and doing and doing stuff because they trying to fill the void. So really, that's what it was. But it's called My Journey to Healing. I just took a picture of the um the kindle um the amazon picture so it's called my journey to healing by miss kimberly morrell so that's a great read you can go download that for 1497 um uh, another sweet client she has the book today up on amazon everybody gets nervous it's a children's book and i think i showed this to you guys before i got her children's book here yeah. everybody gets nervous it's a really cute book to help you know 
young children realize everybody gets nervous, but guess what? We just do it anyway. And then this one right here is really good. This one came out in October 1st. Her name is Akita Campbell, um, a mega ministry of pastors doing a whole bunch of stuff. Um, but it's a really good book. I promise you, you may want to go to Amazon and get this. Redemption by Nikita Campbell. And then, of course, we had the Unmute Yourself book um, who that has done really, really well for us. I'm excited about it. So if you don't have Unmute Yourself, you can definitely go get Unmute Yourself. So what I really, really, really want to come and tell you guys is that February the 5th and the 6th, 2021, and I kind of talked about this the other day. Um, but now I'm making the official announcement tonight and then I'll share it out with people that's on um, news list tomorrow. And then you'll keep seeing the flyers and flyers and flyers come out really, really soon. But February the 5th and 6th, 2021, we're doing the Pretty Heal and Handsomely Whole Conference. Two years ago in February, we did the same thing. It was, well, it was similar. It was called um, Pretty Broken. <laughs> and handsomely hearted, healing the hurting church girl and the hardened um, man, right? But I realized people don't really want to be associated with pretty broken <laughs> or handsomely hearted, right? We want to affirm and declare where we're headed and what we want to see and what we want to stay. So whether I feel pretty healed or not every day, whether I feel like I'm on the up and up and come up every day, I still declare that. And so, bro, you can uh, buy you a shirt. It's coming. But we have the men's shirts coming. We will probably have them like next week. It's called Handsomely Whole. You declare that you are handsomely whole man. I've been sharing this. We don't want to be pretty heel women with broke down and beat down men. Or you don't want to be a handsomely whole man with a beat down, broke down woman. Now, can we still work on ourselves? Of course, you're never going to get anybody perfect because we're not perfect people. But I'm talking about actually working on yourself to become to become whole, actually working on yourself to become healed. And the other person just kind of sitting there. It's like, well, what the crap? So Pretty Hill Conference is coming. Pretty Hill and Handsomely Whole is coming February the 5th and February the 6th. And so on that Saturday, we will have breakout sessions for the men. Um, last time we did it, Mr. Nick, he came from Wisconsin to Maryland. We had it in person two years ago. He came from Maryland to Wisconsin and all the feedback I got from the men that was there was like, that was very powerful. So I have not asked Mr. Nick yet, but I'm definitely going to ask Mr. Nick, would he come? Cause it's going to be virtual this time. So he doesn't have to travel or anything like that. But me and we'll have a session where it'll be just men talking, talk about what does it mean to be handsomely whole? Cause I'm not a man and I don't know what that means, but for the women, we got you. So I'm going to read a little bit about the event and then I'm going to log off and I'll say, God bless you guys. And I hope you have a great night. So pretty heel, pretty heel and handsomely whole virtual conference. It is February 5th and 6th. Now, remember I said pretty? We just not pretty with a face. I'm not just saying pretty. Pretty, there's a message behind this. Powerful. Powerful because you don't go in your own strength. You go in the strength of God. Resilient. You have to bounce back. I mean, so many things come, come at you that you really got to be a resilient person. You say, okay, I can't allow this to stop me. Educate and edify. And education doesn't come with a degree. Right. I'm not talking about a degree with your experience. You become educated. You can read and become educated. Right. Edify. You build yourself up and then you turn around and build other people up around you. Sometimes we get upset when people are speaking death and we rightfully should. There's death and life in the power of our tongue. We eat the fruit thereof. Numbers 14, 28 says, I would do to you what I heard you say, says the Lord. Right. So we wonder why things are happening to us. But we keep speaking it. We keep speaking our whole life right in front of us. If God spoke the world into its existence, how much more can you create the world that you want with the words that you say? That's why I went back to this book. These these affirmations I was saying, I wasn't living this stuff. I didn't even know how it was possible. But I said, I'm just stand on God's word, right? I reject the praises of fools today and forevermore, right? I don't get all caught up when people... You can tell when people are really genuine when they say nice things about you. You really know when people are genuine when they really do care. I reject the praises of fools. I don't let just anybody be boasting about me. Now, you can say what you want to say. But for me to receive it, I just don't receive it from everybody. 
I speak with wisdom and give instruction with kindness. I had to keep saying that over and over again because sometimes when I would go to school and I had to teach some students who weren't listening, I didn't want to be kind. I didn't want to speak with kindness, but I would have to say that over and over again. I speak with wisdom and I give instruction with kindness. I listen to sound counsel and I'm not right in my own eyes. I hate evil and I establish justice in the educational gate. I'm not sure what you're called to. You could be called to uh, government, politics. You could be called to, to music, to the arts. I don't know where you're called to. You could be called to the to the financial arena. I don't know where you, you could be called to the hospitality arena. I don't know where you're called to, right? But you can establish justice while you're there. <laughs> you can establish justice while you're there. I've been granted the key of David. You've been granted the key of David. Every door that God has shut, nobody, no person, no power can open it, right? And every door that God opens, no man, no power has the ability to shut it. So a lot of times we have to watch what we're saying. Watch what we're saying. I will increase in wisdom and stature. I will increase in wisdom and stash. And we have to watch what we allow people to say to us. And they will say, oh, girl, we're just joking. I, I don't like when people say, oh, girl, um, you're talking me to death. No, I'm not talking you to death. You're not talking me to death, right? You're talking me to life, right? And I pray every day, Lord, I apply the blood of Jesus over me and my family's life that no premature death angel will show up and take us out. Every day I pray that over me and my family. I cover us, our homes, our modes of transportation, wherever we lay our heads, may the blood of Jesus cover and keep us that no premature death angel will come and take us out. So when people talk about, you know, you talking me to death or you killing me, no, 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 no. You ain't killing me. You ain't talking me to death you gotta speak life the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart are acceptable in the eyes of the lord <laughs> we worry about our words and, and our meditation being acceptable to people the first person that we need to ultimately worry about the only person we need to ultimately worry about is our meditation in our heart acceptable to the lord he says that the heart is desperately wicked desperately when you put the l y on that that means that you seek after that that our hearts seek after sin our, we were shaped and born into sin right so our hearts long for those things that's going to appease appease our flesh the lord is my strength that he's redeemed me i can run through troops and leap over walls so whatever roadblocks whatever things that try to come and stop you ask the lord to give you hinds feet may i may i leap over this father may i may i bulldoze this down so i can get to where it is that you call me to be the lord is my buckler the lord is my shield mm -hmm. here's another one i like lord clean me from my and it's not really i like because all of them you mean you gotta live by them lord clean me from my secret faults the secret things that don't nobody know, Lord, keep me from my secret faults. The things that I wouldn't dare tell people, keep me from my secret faults and keep me from my presumptuous sins. You know, those things that it's like, man, I really want to do that. Like I low key, high key, middle key. I really want to do that. Keep me from my presumptuous sins. These sins do not have dominion over me. Even when you do them, even when you like, I'm really going to do this. I don't know if y'all ever been like this where you know what you about to do is wrong. You pray, God, please forgive me even before you do it because you already made up your mind that I'm going to do it. So I'd be like, Lord, please, just please forgive me. Like, please help me, Lord. Please help me, Lord. And he always gives us a way of escape, but our hearts is desperately wicked. So we like, man. He's so faithful. I know he's going to forgive me. Then you feel bad about it later and be like, oh, my gosh. Right. Lord, keep me from my secret faults. Keep me from my presumptuous sins. Those things I don't want people to know about. My lips speak right. What is right when I open my mouth? My lips speak right when I open my mouth. Right. Even if you want to say something crazy. Sometimes it's like. Lord, keep my mouth. Keep my mouth. <laughs> I want to speak what's right when it comes out. In Psalms 24, 6, this is why I declare over this generation now and forevermore. This is the generation that seeks the Lord. This is the generation that seeks the Lord. And so let me get back to this pretty hill, hence the whole conference. February the 6th. 5th and 6th, 2021. So edify. We edify ourselves. We speak life over ourselves. Thankful. Being thankful. I mean, there's so many things we can be thankful. The fact that you got internet, that you, where you are, it gets good service. Because when I go on with my mama, 
I don't always get good service, right? I can't sit up and do a Facebook live there because it's probably going to go out. Um, um, so be thankful for the small things and the big things. For some of us, we know health is something we're definitely thankful for, that we're safe, that our families are okay, that we in our right minds, that you have a job, you have income coming in. A lot of things we could be thankful for. Transform, right? We're transforming every day, renewing our mind, being transformed, yielded. Yield at me, slow down. Sometimes we have to slow down and pause. What, what are we doing? If what we're doing doesn't really align with our values and what we believe, then we have to take a moment and say, you know what? I'm probably going to stop doing that. I probably shouldn't do that. Like we should evaluate. I believe we should evaluate ourselves every 21 days, every 15 days, every month, not wait until January of the new year or December, the last weeks of December to say, oh yeah, I'm going to get it right next year. And why you got to wait till next year? Because we already know that next year is not promised. Well, let me not say that. Now, Eve, I got to watch the words. Why we got to wait? We don't know what the future holds. So why wait and put something off that you can start today? You can say, hey, listen, my uh, I, I, I I'm not going to wait until 2021 to declare whatever or to change or to Make up my mind, I'm going to do something different. You don't have to wait to that, right? And sometimes just slowing down to really evaluate what you're doing, it will put you in a position to say, yep, I need I need to change directions. I, I really do need to yield and slow down. So to this conference, it's a two-day experience. <laughs> and, and when I wrote, I read this the other day. I wrote this like a while back, but I just read it just now. Or I'm reading it now. And it's like, wow, I'm going to probably change some of the verbiage later. Um, but it's a two day experience that will start the first quarter of 2020 all for you on a high note. Now I'm not into feelings. Um, I do feel, I have a lot of emotions, right? But I'm not into just trying to hype somebody up on emotions. We really want to provide you with tangible things you can go and implement that day. We want to share with you testimonies that will encourage you that day. We want to give you techniques and strategies to show you what can be done for you if you implement them that day. And it's not going to be a thing where you get so overwhelmed and so bombarded, but you're going to have to uh, uh, be strategic in your learning. You have to be strategic in um, your note taking. You have to be strategic in your uh, focusing so you can get what it is that you need. Pretty Hill and Hansley Whole were created for the man and the woman who desires to be whole in the core areas of their lives. Now it says core areas, but we want to be whole in all of areas of our lives. But sometimes when you start looking at all the things that's wrong with us, you become overwhelmed. So stop looking at all the 55,000 things that's wrong with us. Start with one thing at a time. I remember one time I wrote down Oof, all this stuff in like 2016. I was like, look, this, this is too much. I'm a real bad person. Like, what's going on? And I start working little by little. And I remember one day he told me to just like X him out when I went back to it. And I was X him out. He's like, that's what the blood of Jesus does. That's what forgiveness of, it X's out your stuff. See, people a lot of times don't forgive you, but God always forgives you when you go back and ask. People may never forget what you did to them, but God says, I throw it in the sea of forgetfulness. People will hold stuff over your head and say, oh, they'll never change. But God, he will recycle and pull out the trash can what people threw away. I'm a witness right so don't focus on all the things that you may need to work on at this moment pick you one or two things and just keep working on them i read a book it was called eat the frog i really like that book uh, but it talks about when you got like 15 20 values you really don't have any you got to focus on the one or two maybe three at the most that you really gonna value and you stick with those things right honesty if that's one of your values that's going to carry you a long ways. If integrity is one of your values, that's going to carry you a long way. If family is one of your values, that's going to, uh, that's one of the things you value. That's going to carry you a long way, right? If business and money and ministry is one of your values, those things will carry you a long way in, in all areas because you will think, okay, is this going to be beneficial for my family? 
Is this going to be helpful for my ministry or for the ministry that God has given me? Is this going to be a benefit or value for the business, right? So whatever your values are, you have one or two and you just operate in them, dominate them. You can't have like 55 values, right? Um, you could, but how many are you really going to live in? How, how many are you really going to um, implement? And of course, we add more things as we go. But what are those dominant things that really stand out for you? So the theme of the conference, and I got this at our last session with our coach at Vocalize. Um, I was having an exchange with um, one of my Vocalizer sisters. And then we followed up with a text afterwards. But the theme of the conference is called the Year of Establishment. And it's off of 1 Peter 5 and 10. After you have suffered a while, after you suffered a while, I didn't say we we're going to suffer always. After you have suffered a while, then God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ with himself. Sometimes we'd be looking for people. God will do it. When I really committed my life to Christ, I was in my apartment on the floor. In Greensboro, like, Lord, you got to help me. I really want to change for real. And look at me now. <laughs> I've definitely changed from then. But with himself restore, God himself will restore you. And I shared the other night about the scripture that he told me where I think it was Matthew 12 and 13. When it says lift up your the man had a feeble hand, lift up your hand. Matter of fact, let's just do that again tonight. Matthew 12 and 13. He'll restore you. Matthew 12 and 13. Then he said to the man, hold out your hand. So the man and this, he was talking to me last Sunday and I just broke down this crowd for like, you know, a little bit of time because I was like, thank you. Then he said to the man, hold out your hand. So the man held out his hands and it was restored. Just like the other one. He will restore you himself. You don't necessarily have to have people to come lay hands on you or for somebody to pray for you. Now, I know how it is when you want people to pray for you in your he hearing because I'd I be like sometimes like, oh, my God, because that's a part of just having people knowing people care and people are really dead. Right. You can know it or feel like it. But to have people actually do it, it's like, wow. Right. Hold out your hands. He says, then the man was restored. Hold out your hands and say, Lord, restore me. If whatever area you may need him to hold, restore you, Lord, restore me. It says. After you have suffered a while, the God of all grace, not part grace, not sometime grace, not when you feel like a grace of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ with himself, with himself. Sometimes we give people too much credit. Right. We thank God that people that God uses people and we thank God that people share their experiences. But God says this one I'm going to do. I'm going to restore you. I'm going to confirm you. I'm going to strengthen you. And I'm going to be the one that establishes you. That's what it's all based on. That after we've suffered a while, and for some people, some people have suffered more this year than they may have suffered all their lives. But after you suffered a while, God himself is going to restore you and confirm you and strengthen you and establish you. So Pretty Hill is for the woman again. Powerful, resil resilient, educated, edified, thankful, transformed, and yielded. No matter how many times things try to knock us down, the success circles that a pretty woman or a handsomely whole man has cultivated and nourishment and nourish will not let you stay down. Find you some brothers and sisters who don't let you stay in that place. You may not like it. It may be... Uh, uh, you may get mad or be upset or be offended, but they won't let you stay in that place. They'll, they'll kind of chin check you, right? Like, why are you doing it? Why you keep doing it? Why you keep being like that? Why you keep living like that, right? And sometimes we don't want people to call us out, but you need people who will call you out on yourself, not to embarrass you, not to do it on social media, not to do it in front of people, but you know, y'all can have that conversation and be like, listen, this is what it is. Okay. Um, so Speakers are going to teach you. We have all the women speakers. Well, not all the women speakers, but I have a couple of them. Are, I'm going to share with you right now that we have those confirmed. But speakers will teach, equip, and train you with the techniques, strategies, and tips on how they have 
reached the place of being pretty healed and how they're still going through the process of being pretty healed. Um, and so your suffering is not permanent. Let me, let me, let me type this on this thing. Your suffering is not permanent. Your suffering is not permanent. So let me take that down so we can personalize this. My suffering, whatever that may be, is not permanent. It's just not permanent. Um, so it's Friday, February 5th from 8.30 to 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's going to be VIP registration. That's a paid registration because the keynote speaker I have that night is going to be fire. And then Saturday from 12 to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, that's when we'll have the men speaking, the breakout sessions, the women speaking. And so I'm excited to bring that um, to you guys again. So right now we have six confirmed speakers. The first one is Simone Walden. <laughs> Simone Walden, me. <laughs> um, second is a person to be about Yehuda. You probably seen her. I posted her yesterday being pretty here with her shirt on from Hawaii. Um, Constance Craig Mason, she's a confirmed speaker. Um, Anaya Day is a confirmed speaker. They're both my vocalizer sisters. Um, my mentee in Canada, Melissa Hathaway, she's a confirmed speaker. And another one of the uh, mute, beautiful co-authors, um, Sanseria Coates, is a confirmed speaker. And so I'm excited about what they're going to share. Um, I'm definitely going to have all the get all the men speakers together. So fellas, men tune in with us that day. It's going to be a man only session where y'all can talk about man things and cry and whatever y'all do when y'all get together. I don't know. Um, bond and you can, you can virtually bond with people. Um, you don't necessarily have to be on the screen or like beside them to, to bond with people, or you just feel connected with people when they start sharing. Cause it's like, man, that's similar to me. Oh shoot. I was going through that. Oh, that happened to me. So I wanted to share that with you guys tonight. Be blessed in Jesus name. I don't know if I'll come back tomorrow or Sunday. I don't know. But when I do, I pray that whatever I say be a blessing to you um, as it is a blessing to me. So you guys go over to seminatewall.com. Let me put this up here for y'all. I'm going to share the screen. Now go over to seminatewalden.com and you can scroll down because guys, I'm, I promise you when I tell you people don't read Oh gosh, you just be like, my goodness. When they talk about um students not reading, man, you'd be surprised how many adults don't be reading. You just be like, well, good gracious. Um, so you go here and it says products, apparel, services. Click on the item for full description and purchase. Now, let me just say this. You know, at first I used to be like, you know, I need to get my and I, I'm gonna get my good night. I'm gonna get my website redone over but honey right now we gonna keep working this until we can get another website so um it was done by me but i promise you can still buy a book you can still buy a shirt we have the mask the white mask you can click and it says click the picture to purchase so you have to click on the picture and then everything will say so you have the white hoodies the black hoodies and tees you have the bundle you get the t-shirt or in the hoodie together as a bundle uh, and then these are all the holiday color colors. It's only available from December 15th to 25th only. You got the red, the khaki, the blue, all of these here, right? Then you buy my Speak Life comprehensive program. Some of you may want to practice Speaking Life, right? It's a $7 audio and it comes with a downloadable worksheet. So you can go get that for seven bucks. And of course, if you want to get your book published with the student teacher, um, next year I'm taking maybe four or five one-on-one -on -one client, client, client um, because we're working on this um, anthology. If you want to be a part of the anthology, um, the heart of a leader, the person behind the title, <clears throat> this is something that the Lord gave me today. It's Mississippi, and I don't know if maybe so Miss Janice is up here, but he told me he says Mississippi meets Maryland, Maryland meets Mississippi, because right now we have authors that are from Mississippi and authors that are from Maryland. And so if all we do is stay with the authors that we have right now, we're going to still rock out. I'm not about, I do, I, I do like increase, you know, I, I love having, you know, more than enough of what I need, but when it comes to making an impact with people's voices and stuff, 
I don't look at necessarily the numbers. I look at the impact that they have on what they're going to say. So if we have to be a smaller collective than what I wanted, we're going to rock this thing out. But if you want to be a part, it's called the heart of a leader, the person behind the side. You can send me a message and I'll send you all the information about it. Um, we kick this thing off in January and it's going to be released in April of 2021. So I love you guys tonight. Be blessed in Jesus name. I got to get up early in the morning because I have a gig to do. Um, you know what y'all see me doing right here? <laughs> I do this for another organization and then they pay me to do it. Right. So again, like people are looking and saying, well, why are you doing this? And why are you doing that? You, you don't know what, what's the reason and motive. That's not my reason why I come up here and do this. But the fact that I've learned this platform and shared it with a lot of people now say benefit is a financial benefit for me. So I'm excited. God bless you all tonight. I'm glad that this was a benefit to all of you beautiful people who have received. Go out and do great. Go out and do wonders. I pray the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his your make his face shine upon you and give you peace, I believe. Sometimes I forget some of the some of the scripture, but it's not intentional. So, I love you guys tonight. Peace. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them here. I don't, I don't ask for, you very really, rarely do I ask for prayer requests, <laughs> but if there's something you, you really believe in God for, or you need some prayer for tonight, I will write it down and um, I'll take it to the father. But again, sometimes we're looking for people to pray for us and get us through and all of this stuff. Now, uh, if God can heal a sinner, when we pray the sinner's prayer, surely he can hear you, <laughs> right? Surely he can hear me. Um, so, yeah. So, love you guys. Have a good night. Bye. Hey, Periscope. Hey, YouTube. Hey, Twitter. Hey, Facebook. If you're not following the student teacher page, go click, like, share, follow the student teacher page, right? Um, yeah. So, love you guys. Peace. Bye, bro. Love you. I'll call you again tomorrow. I can't call you tonight because I'm going to bed. But I'm going to try again tomorrow to call you. Bye.